Yuri Andrukovich is a leading voice among intellectuals in Ukraine. He's a novelist, poet, essayist, and a lover of the German language. Welcome. Hello. You're watching the DW interview. Welcome. I'm Alexandra von Namen. Mr. Andrukovich, you're known as a dedicated European who has always emphasized Ukraine's place in Europe. But when you look at the condition of the European Union today, do you still want to be a member? Oh, yes, definitely. Obviously, it's difficult for Ukraine after Ukraine has fought so dramatically and so stoically for its European future to then be confronted with a slightly different reality. A stubborn reality that the European Union is not an ideal structure. And it's a structure that's facing so many challenges in itself. To such an extent that one has to ask oneself if it can even survive. And it's at precisely this moment that Ukraine is dreaming of becoming a member. But nevertheless, I believe this is a productive time. What I mean by that is, the European Union is not a union without any prospects at all. There are still societies that see the European project as their chance for a better future. Despite all the challenges, you were amongst the demonstrators who went out onto Maidan Square just under two years ago, calling for closer ties with the EU. How do you feel now when you think back to that time and see the way things are in Ukraine now? Do you feel proud or disappointed? For me personally, it's more a sense of pride. I don't regret taking part. I don't regret this whole process. I don't regret all this time. It was a real revolution of dignity. And it was also a sign that the values that are seen as the foundation of being European are still very much alive. These values had such an effect that millions of people were mobilized for this popular uprising. And should I ever write another novel? I dream constantly about writing one, but I can't seem to get started. I would like the novel to be about things like this. Can you think of a particular encounter or scene that you experienced? Yes, in the last phase of the protests on the Maidan, it was a really dangerous time when the first demonstrators were killed and people were slowly starting to move into a different mode, into fighting mode, so to speak. And there was this unknown musician who looked like he was ready for war. He was wearing camouflage fatigues and a mask. No one could see his face. And there was an old piano standing in front of the Kiev City Hall. And he sat there quite often at this piano and played music from Ludovico Einaudi or John Lennon's Imagine or Chopin's revolutionary Etude. 
And there was such a bold contrast between this very military combative appearance and the brilliant and beautiful music he played. And for me, he became like a symbol to a certain extent of the whole thing. It wasn't a peaceful revolution, unfortunately. There was a lot of blood spilled, a lot of fighting. Did Europe let Ukraine down after that, when Russia annexed Crimea and when the Russian-backed separatists in the east of the country went to war? In my opinion, Europe did everything that was possible, and it still is doing that today. The European Union works primarily through diplomatic channels, and I think that's the right way to do things. Because this whole war argument is our responsibility now. It's Ukraine's responsibility to build up its army and increase its defense capabilities. Europe can only be a diplomatic partner in this respect. But what I do think is a mistake that the West has made is the position of NATO. In this case, it would have been a very good preventative measure to stop Russian aggression, or at least to significantly restrict it, if accession to NATO would be considered for Ukraine. You're considered something of an expert on Germany. You've lived here, you sometimes recite your texts in German and translate German poetry. How did that come about? It wasn't my choice at the beginning. At the age of seven, I was sent to a school in Ukraine where German was taught as a key discipline. It was a school with extra German lessons. And we studied Goethe's poetry, too. In fact, by the age of eight or nine, we could already recite some of his poems by heart. Like Heidenröslein, for example. And so that went on for ten years. And that caused me to start dreaming about the possibility that maybe one day I might be able to speak to someone who was a native speaker of German. At that time, that seemed totally impossible. At the end of the 1970s, I had no chance of being able to visit communist East Germany, let alone West Germany, of course. But times change, and at the beginning of the 1990s, I was able to come to Germany for the first time. And I came then in my status as someone who had translated the poems of Rainer Maria Rilke. And so there was this cultural bridge through poetry into this world, which was for me above all to do with the language, the German language, which I really like a lot. You've received many international prizes, German ones too. Now you've just received the Goethe Medal for your work in promoting the German language and the intellectual exchange between Germany and Ukraine. Do Germans really understand how Ukrainians think? I have to say that of all the nations in Europe, the Germans are the most open towards others, in my opinion. The Germans seek to understand others, or at least to show interest in the significance of others, what they want, what they're thinking. And 
And I can see throughout the course of my career how things have changed. It's one thing to talk about Ukraine in 1992, and quite another to talk about Ukraine today. Of course, more than 20 years have passed since then, but I'm not unhappy. I find that Germany currently has a lot more understanding and more awareness of Ukraine and life in Ukraine. We always round off the DW interview with three open-ended sentences that I would ask you to complete. If your daughter Sophia, who is also a writer, would ask you to read her new manuscript before it's published, then? Then I would drop everything and read it. Are you happy that she's become a writer too? Yes. Not because she's my daughter, but because she's a brilliant writer. It's a great pleasure to read anything new she's written. The next time I meet Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko, I... I'll remain silent. Why? Because I have so much to say that he would never have the time to listen. In 20 years, Ukraine will be... Ukraine will be a member of the EU. Mr. Andrukovich, many thanks. Thank you.